and sweeps. Oh, and yes, the opponent, the Memphis Grizzlies, still so banged up. Boy, do they fight hard on Saturday night and almost beat Golden State. Still shorthanded, still going to the playoffs. But what a tough task tonight before a crowd that is ready to roar and have been ready to roar for the past couple of hours. The victory the other night against San Antonio, putting them in this position to go for the record here in front of their home fans. Another sellout crowd, 175th consecutive sellout. And boy, have these fans been spoiled the last couple of years. Curry up top, Draymond Green. And a rebound goes to Farmar. Memphis, meanwhile, they are still playing for a playoff spot. They're officially in. They could be either sixth or seventh. A win tonight would put them in sixth as Matt Barnes misfires on his first shot. Here at home, 38 and 2. Last year in their championship season, they were 39 and 2. Barnes, Green misses the tip and is fouled on the second. The shot will not count. He was fouled on the second tip. And Draymond Green will shoot. Steve Kerr talking about it nonstop the past couple of days. Of course, he was a role player and a very good one on the 95 96 Bulls. And after missing those first 43 games, has done a marvelous job once again. As Mark, as you said the other night, so much credit goes to not just Luke Walton, but the entire coaching staff. Well, in, in order to sustain Steve Kerr not being there throughout the course of the entire season, they had to do that collectively. It's like a team missing a, a star player. You step up, you acknowledge the responsibilities, and they've handled their business as a staff. And they should be applauded. Grizzlies this year, 16 and 24 on the road. The last time they were here, many months ago, they lost by 50. Randolph can't hit. Rebound finds its way back to Randolph. And he puts it up and in. And again, Memphis playing without Mark Gasol, playing without Mike Connolly, amongst others, as Clay Thompson rattles one home. Andrew Bogut. Bogut's been one of those Warriors, along with Andre Iguodala, as Randolph knocks it down. He's tried not necessarily to downplay, but talk more about the championship, whereas players like Draymond Green and Steph Curry, very vocal of how important this night is to them. Thompson shoots over Randolph. And a rebound, Barnes. Barnes throws it behind Anderson. Off the turnover. Curry, long distance. Barnes tips it, knocks it out of bounds. Memphis ball. And a rough start right now, shooting-wise, for Golden State. They're just one of six. Well, here Memphis is no secret. You cannot turn the basketball over against this Warrior team. It's a recipe for disaster. Jordan Farmar, the former Laker champion, start of the year in Israel. With all the injuries, especially at point guard, they needed a lot of help. Green off the Randolph miss. Green finds Curry, open three, puts it in. Three down, the other one won't go. Curry now 152 consecutive games with a three. Thompson too strong. Barnes the rebound. These Warriors, you can tell, they are fired up. Farmar calmly sinks that one. Now, what do you think right now, Mark? If you're the Memphis Grizzlies. You're shorthanded. You're undermanned. And you know everybody in this building just wants to crown this team as the greatest regular season record of all time. What's going through your mind as a Grizzly? Well, you're not going to just give it to him as Harrison Barnes knocks down the shot. You come in there with the mentality to protect history and also make a statement because this is a team that's you know, been questioned all season long themselves. Short-handed injuries, they found a way to get into the playoffs. So they have the same mentality that they've had all year long. 
Randolph the rebound, back out Carter. Carter well beyond the arc, hits the three-pointer. And the Grizzlies tie it up. And it's Carter who played with Del Curry's dad. Curry another three. Got it. But if you're Jordan Farmer guarding Curry, you can't try to shoot the gap and give him space. Farmar answers back with a little shot of his own. And Jordan Farmar, two for two. Thompson kicks it out, Barnes. Curry finds Green, wide open. And Mike, he has his three-point shooting number since the All-Star break have really dropped off. It's still 33% or so, but those are the shots that when you're defending this Warrior team, you're going to have to end up giving up if you're to try to stop Curry and Thompson. Randolph gets inside. And Randolph still as good as it gets down low in the post at 34 years old. Quickly down the other end is Draymond Green. And it's the cross match. Randolph is defending. Andrew Bogut, and in transition, Draymond Green, somebody's got to talk and communicate getting him. Foul on Harrison Barnes on the rebound. It's off of a made shot, so Randolph does a good job. Now all of a sudden, they got to sprint back. Both bigs in the paint, in a home run trot somewhat. Draymond Green does a great job of running in transition, and Steph Curry delivers the on-point pass. That's too easy if you're Memphis. Foul came on the rebound, so Grizzlies will inbound. Lance Stevenson quickly checking in. Randolph against Bogut. Randolph leans, forces it up, and they shuffle his pivot foot and call for travel. Good defense from Andrew Bogut. Third turnover for Memphis. Dave Yeager has done a marvelous job this year holding this team together despite being decimated by injuries. Bogut's pass finds a way to Barnes. Thompson for three. Every three-point shot, the oohs and ahs. And as Barnes can't connect, Barnes had a terrific game the last time they played on Saturday. 25 points, 14 boards. Curry to the basket. Blocked by Barnes with a foul. As Curry goes down, and the obligatory boost for Barnes, who used to be cheered here. Well, there's been some confusion in transition. Curry blows by Carter and draws the foul. Good effort to rotate across. It's hand part of the ball, I don't know. That looked like a little bit of the wrist. As Barnes picks up his first. Barnes has played for nine different teams, including Golden State, for a couple of years. He was on that 2007 Warrior team that defeated the number one Dallas Mavericks in the playoffs. That was a fun team to watch here at Oracle Arena. And how about that? How many of those guys have made statements saying that that team would beat this team? <laughs> they need to calm down. <laughs> Curry has been atop the free throw percentage board as well, in addition to leading the league in scoring, in addition to leading the league in steals per game as well. We're midway through the first. Jordan Farmar. Andre Iguodala's in, cut to the basket! Timeout Memphis. And here comes the first standing ovation of the night. Andre Iguodala, one of the best passers in the game. Great basket cut by Clay Thompson for the easy bucket. I stay fresh like a wrapped in plastic. Beat those plastic, see galactic. Southside more we Cadillacic. Charismatic, Asiatic. 95-96 Bulls team. When I was lucky enough to be with the Bulls 20 years ago, it was an incredible uh, journey. And when we won our 72nd game, I remember thinking, there's no way anybody is ever going to do this again. Because it, it's, 
It's so hard. And we had Michael Jordan. You know, Michael personally won 15, 20 games, just, you know, games we shouldn't have won. He just would win. You know, Jeff, it's a simple statement, but it is so hard. It's hard to win one game, let alone 50, 60. I mean, to have single-digit losses in an NBA game, an NBA season, incredible. Randolph throws it up and in. And that he's a part of both of them, I mean, you just got to be thank so thankful. You got to show him some more respect, too, Mike. Saying he's a knockdown shooter. He was a, he was a lockdown defender also. I mean, as the story is told, it gets greater and greater. <laughs> he should have received votes for Defensive Player of the Year. Is that what you're telling me? Absolutely. I'm sure Steve would, would agree with me. Hogan called for the foul. He has heard from a number of his former teammates. He's still very good friends with Judd Bushler. He's heard from Luke Longley. He got an email the other day from Phil Jackson, of course, the coach of those Chicago Bulls. He said Bushler the other night was watching the San Antonio game. And in the first half, Bushler admitted to him, he's rooting for the Spurs. Bushler wants to keep the record. But then he said at halftime, what am I doing? I got to root for my pal and rooted for the Warriors in the second half. But Steve said that Judd Bushler, Poway's finest, was actually taking credit for 10 wins in that Bulls <laughs> great season. So Jordan was ready for 15, Bushler for 10, and Curry, oh my goodness. From about five feet beyond the arc, and it's a five-point lead. Curry now with three threes. He's five away from 400. Bogut with the block. Green back to Curry. Bang! Again! got 17 points here in the first quarter. He's up one right now. 17 to 16. He's winning. Xavier Munford, a rookie in the game for Memphis. Came in a couple of breaks ago with Stevenson, Randolph, Carter, and Barnes. Carter off balance. Curry corrals the rebound. Curry averaging five and a half rebounds a game. Tries another. Crowd wanted that one. Festus Azili grabs the rebound. Azili just checking in. John Livingston as well. Curry on the drive, back up top to Green. Lost the handle. Randolph loses it. Tip deflected out of bounds, last touch by Mumford. Golden State ball, as Jermichael Green will come in from Memphis. Our upcoming NBA national TV schedule. ESPN 2 right now, Kobe Bryant's final game of the Staples Center, and then the playoffs start on ABC Saturday, TNT Sunday, and NBA TV next week. What a way to finish the regular season to get yourself ready for the postseason. Uh, as a whistle and a foul, that one not count. <laughs> Goodness gracious, as Munford is called for a foul, and Steve Kerr will talk it over. 27 points are ready for the Warriors, 17 already for Curry. about him in terms of his farewell special night in LA as well 
to me, anybody that's a fan of the game of basketball, a side of you wants to be at the Staples Center tonight, acknowledging greatness and what an incredible all-time 20-year run that Kobe Bryant has put on. Well, how about those crowds assembling outside of the Staples Center t tonight just to be a part of it? And, you know, when there was a picture on the Internet about him getting off his helicopter. I got emotional looking at that. Like, this guy has been doing it over half his life in the NBA, and now he's going to face this transition into what's next. And I just hope that he has as much joy in what's next as he had in his NBA career. Well, from us not being there, I can speak on behalf of all of us and say thank you, Kobe Bryant. Thank you very much. So it's been so much fun to watch him play with such joy this year and smile and enjoy the moment. The <laughs> three, another three. That's seven three-pointers. Curry with five of them, but there's seven of 15 from downtown. And Ali quickly is ballooned to 12. Stevenson, turnaround shot is good. And Stevenson will play a very important role for the Grizzlies in the playoffs. And picking him up from the Clippers during the season. Livingston, one-hander. The bench, such a big part of the success of the Warriors last year and this year. Munford runner. Nice bounce there. The rookie from Rhode Island. Played in the D-League last couple of years. They just signed him in early March. You guys were impressed with him the other night. Ball deflected out of bounds in the game in Memphis Saturday. I was very impressed with his toughness. Was able to run the team offensively. Had an edge to him. Certainly a guy that looks like he belongs in this league. There's Jersey kid, a couple of years at junior college before the last two years at Rhode Island. No, I, I like what a lot of these D League guys have shown. Jermichael Green, I think, has shown up well. <laughs> but why are they shooting the gap on Curry? I, they're giving him space. Six three-pointers here in the first. The NBA record for most threes in a quarter is nine. That's his buddy Clay Thompson, the Splash Brother, in his 37-point quarter last year. Defensive three seconds call against the Warriors. One shot tactical. And you watch off the pin down, off the out-of-bounds play. He's in good position, and then he tries to go in between Azili, and it just... It's just not smart basketball. And it's bad defense by Memphis. you got to stay connected to his body, but I point the finger to this. The Warriors have made a conscious effort to come out and get Steph Curry, if you haven't noticed, the 400 threes for the season. It says a lot. They're not disrespecting the game, but they care about the accomplishments. They care about rewarding their superstar player and each other. It's totally unselfish. Carter short, Azili the rebound. Shot clock turned off to hold it for the final shot. Curry has obliterated his own mark. He was the first to 300 threes earlier this season. Now perhaps 400. Curry downtown. Tipped up and in by Azili. Barnes drives, blocked by Azili. With nine tenths of a second remaining. Carter will inbound. Chance of Warriors, chance of MVP. And the MVP will sit down as Leandro Barbosa comes in. This crowd has been on its feet almost the entire first period. Munford. And the first quarter comes to an end. Out of the gate with 20. Six three-pointers. The team with eight threes. And they Welcome back to Oracle Arena with Memphis's Dave Yeager. 
you faced so many challenges over the course of the season. Tonight you look opposite a team desperate to make history. What do you ask of your guys? Well, let's go out and compete and play hard and, and, uh, and battle. And we've done that for the last 25 games since the trades and, and then start, injuries started and guys have stuck together like crazy. And it's, uh, it's been different names on the back of the uniforms. They care about each other and they're playing hard. Steph Curry, obviously a challenge for every team. Breakdowns for your group where? Well, it's a great learning experience for Xavier Mumford. You know, uh, he's trying his best. Uh, we got to give him support, but who has to show out at half court? You know what I mean? You should go under those, but, you know, he certainly got it going, and, and I think they shot 15 or 16 threes. They're playing free and loose, and, and they want to get it over quick, and, and our job is to keep it close as long as we can. Dave, thank you. Thank you. Mike. All right, Doris, Lance Stevenson trying to keep it close, knocking down. Another shot, his third field goal, back to 11. Livingston throws it up, Azili throws it down. Boy, Festus Azili back and looking strong, his sixth game back after missing 31 games following knee surgery. Jamichael Green, Barnes the rebound. Andre Iguodala also back. Iguodala, his fifth game returning. He missed 13 games with a left ankle injury as Barbosa is stripped by Munford. Terrell Martin, the rookie from LSU, has come on for the Grizzlies. The Grizzlies had eight different players on their roster right now who are D-League alums. There's another defensive three seconds call by Gary Zielinski. Eight players who are on 10-day contracts, including Munford. As a reminder, NBATickets.com, the official source for all NBA playoff tickets. Start your search now at NBATickets.com. Tickets always authentic, always available. Boy, I can't wait. What a postseason it could be. Starts on Saturday. And then night after night after night. What a wild night in the Eastern Conference tonight, guys as uh, Miami, Boston, Atlanta, and Charlotte. All the various results, they finished tied, same record, three through six. What a comeback by the Boston Celtics tonight. First game of our doubleheader on this NBA Wednesday. Livingston, pull-up jumper. Livingston is a career-high field goal percentage this year, 54% from the field. And he shoots the same shots every night. Whether it's a post up, turn around, jump shot off, pull up, jump shot off the dribble. He's also a career high games played, which is always a wonderful number to hear about. Short that time, Barbosa's tip won't go, picked up by Munford. Munford knocked down by Barnes. Green comes flying in for the follow. Livingston rifles a pass, open three, Barbosa. Nine threes already for Golden State. I can't say enough the benefit of having Sean Livingston and what Barbosa has done to secure this second unit. The backcourt is dangerous backcourt, even when Steph Curry and Klay Thompson is resting. Stevenson. Stevenson flips it up, shot won't go, rebound Barnes. They're 9 of 18 from downtown, 52% overall. Barbosa from the corner. And even when they had the injuries, Barnes out earlier. Brandon Rush stepped forward. Azili was out. Maurice Spade stepped forward. Even guys that are kind of in and out of the bench rotation when they've had the opportunity. Hairston misses, rebound green, and he's fouled. Yeah, we'll take a timeout. Sean Livingston came into this league an outstanding passer. Great size, the ability to make plays in half court and also in transition. This is a cross-court, on-point pass. Getting it done. Three ball, corner pocket. In case you're wondering, the 95-96 Bulls did lose to the Indiana Pacers twice that season that you were on, Mr. Jackson. And yeah, we had that number. <laughs> Curry resting right now. By the way, Curry has, he has his dad to thank for a lot of things. One of them 
is in that 95-96 season, late in the season, the Bulls are playing at home against Charlotte. And with 20 seconds to go, Del Curry hit the game-winning free throws. I first saw this in a Peter Vesey tweet talking about how Del Curry really had the game winner. He had 12 of his 19 points in the fourth quarter, and that was one of the 10 losses for the Chicago Bulls, courtesy of Mr. Del Curry. And, you know, I was listening to the Charlotte Hornets game where Dell's a great broadcaster. He hasn't been on, as, as we see, Dell's wife and Steph's mom. But I was saying that he wasn't on the broadcast. So I asked Steve Clifford, the coach, and then you asked Steph today. And Dell's on the shelf right now, and we want to send our best wishes to him for a speedy recovery. Uh, a little injury, knee injury. Hopefully home watching his son pour it on once again. His team up 16, and here's the aforementioned Marie Spates. Second foul on Martin. And Spates did a terrific job while Azili was out. A reminder of this magic moment, the next 30 for 30 film to make its debut on ESPN. Looks at the rise and fall of the magic with Jack and Penny in the mid-90s. This magic moment presented by many tomorrow at 9 Eastern on ESPN. Forget sometimes how great Anthony Hardaway was. He was problem. Point guard position, tremendous size, could score the basketball. Scary how good that Orlando Magic team was. They had such a well oiled starting lineup. You had Hardaway, Nick Anderson as your defensive wing, Dennis Scott, one of the great three point shooters. That's ever played Horace Grant and O'Neal. I mean, wow. Pass inside Livingston on a nice look. 48 32, just over four minutes gone by here in the second. Just tuning in, Warriors threw up 37 on the board in the first quarter, including six threes by Steph Curry. Livingston pass to Spates. Steps back. Mo Buckets puts him back up 18. He really can score. Hairston, long distance, and Barnes the rebound. And Barnes throws it out of bounds. When you think about it, this is 6'9, six, 6'10 six, big man. A little jab step. Step back and kiss myself jump shot. <laughs> Mo Spates enjoying the game and knows that he can flat out shoot and score the rock. Spates who spent parts of two seasons with Memphis earlier in his career. Now part of this great bench here in Golden State. A reach and foul call. I think it's on Clay Thompson. So first on Thompson. On the drive to the basket, they get to call it in the act. Yep, two shot foul for Lance Stevenson. Where's that shot? They come to this personal 13 foul. Lance Stevenson. Now Stevenson, of course, who kind of came of age in Indiana with the Pacers during the playoffs. Didn't work out in Charlotte, didn't work out in the Clippers. Hopes it works out here in Memphis. And again, all these guys, they're at, they're at the right point in their career. Older guys who aren't worried about minutes, sure they'd all like to play more, but they have been so embracing of their roles. And you got to find guys that have that mentality, even prior to being a champion or prior to winning. In the middle of these guys, I've been around a lot of them. They had this mentality when they were a 23-win team. So that's how you build character, and that's how the foundation is laid. It's no mistake who they are today. So Iguodala on the bench, perhaps the leader of it all. His numbers not going to blow you away, but his impact. You just talk to the coaching staff. You talk to his teammates. Stevenson catch. Nice fancy pass. Count it and a foul. Sweet look from Stevenson. And Jermichael Green with a chance for a three-point play. 
And there is no doubt Lance Romance has been balling <laughs> since he got here to Memphis. He's played very, very well and has had a huge impact on them remaining competitive. Who's that you're talking about? Lance Stevenson. Is that your own <laughs> nickname for him? Lance Romance. <laughs> <laughs> when he was kiss, uh, blowing in LeBron's ear, that's all he could think of. <laughs> Team has an option on his contract to pick him up next year. Spates throws up an air ball. Harrison able to get it out to Farmar. And that's going to be an interesting decision for them. They're a team that has been so good, the Grizzlies, six consecutive playoffs for them. Only San Antonio more consecutive playoffs in the West. Barnes had it, lost it, picked up by Farmar. Hairston throws it up, and Green can't handle it. Warriors push, Thompson steps, fires, hits. Timeout, Grizzlies. That's 10 three-pointers for Golden State in the lead, back up to 16. Even when he's 30 feet plus, he's still knocking them down. Having to over five threes a game. Green throws it off Martin's back, Barnes throws it up, Spates brings it down. Mo Spates, six points off the bench. Already 17 assists, and there's still over five minutes left here in the second. Jermichael Green gets it to go. These Warriors, not only one of the great shooting teams the league has ever seen, one of the great passing teams as well, Jeff. Well, they pass it often. You never see them as Thompson hits another three. You never see them where they're missing open people and then their bigs can really pass. And that makes a huge difference. And shooting is so crucial. That, that, that set that they just ran, if Memphis runs that same set and get the same shot, it's not going to finish the same way. Klay Thompson and Steph Curry's ability to shoot the basketball, and it's, it's all time. Reach and foul against Memphis. Now, well, Memphis can move the ball all they want, and they can wind up with the same exact shot, and they'd be out of the playoffs. But you move the basketball, and this is a layup for Clay Thompson. To get the assist, you still need to make the shot, and nobody does it better than the Splash Brothers from downtown. There's going to be a new category in the NBA, and it's going to be most three-pointers in a season not by Steph Curry because he is so far... Just destroy the record as Spates misses. Clay Thompson just passed second most behind Ray Allen. Again, second most besides someone named Steph Curry. Martin shot. Another one of the young players, Jerome Martin, just 24. First round pick out of LSU. Thompson again. The onslaught continues. Lead up to 20. They've got 12 three-pointers. The record for most threes in a game by a team is 23. These Warriors have had 22 a couple of games. Randolph drives on Spates. Can't finish. Rebound knocked loose. Last touch by Spates. Grizzly ball. The Warriors pose such a dilemma in transition. Not really a great push, but a great advance pass. And you cannot trot back against the Warrior team. Curry has made a couple of just terrific advance passes off no dribbles. Jarrell Martin foul. Now catch and release on target. For what Mark said, it's like a layup. Curry, meanwhile, not just 20 points, three rebounds, three assists, and a steal. That last foul on Iguodala. The question will be, and he should be, will Steph Curry be a unanimous MVP? 
without question. So there's, there's somebody out there that's going to unless someone wants some to. Attention. Yes. Who, who else would you would you or say if you're voting, who would you put second? You guys. I haven't given it any thought because first has been locked up. Try to get a pass into Thompson and threw it away. His guys has had you know great years, fantastic years. LeBron James has been as always spectacular. Russell Westbrook, Kawhi Leonard, Kevin Durant, Chris Paul, Chris Paul. So the race is for second. Green the rebound. Draymond Green. Six points, six boards, six assists, a three. Off the mark. Farmar grabs it. Under three to play. Bad pass. Green quickly ahead to Igadala. Back out Curry. Curry for three. It's good. His seventh of the game. Munford foul and one as Curry bumped him from behind. Seven of 11 from downtown, 23 points here in the first half. Making a conscious effort to get him the basketball. Iguodala off of the hustle of Harrison Barnes creates the opening and Steph Curry, the MVP, two-time MVP that is, if you listen. <laughs> there was a time where we thought that he was going to become the all-time leading scorer, but all the injuries last couple of years certainly curtailed that. And a wonderful finish that game on ESPN2 as Draymond Green grabs the missed free throw. Now you think about when you look at Kobe Bryant, the number of guys that he's impacted in the game. That's what I love most, how the respect that they're showing him during their interview. Curry got tripped. The crowd thought they missed the call. Ball went out of bounds, so a turnover. Curry looking up at the replay. And actually, he's got tripped by his own guy. Yep. Gary Zielinski right there. Bogut back in. And as Matt Barnes come back in from Memphis with Vince Carter, Randolph. Munford and Martin. Randolph gets it to go. And Memphis posting up Zach Randolph against Bogut or Azili. They want him to be able to face and hit that jump shot. Whereas if he's posting up against smaller guys, they want him to punish and get into the paint area. The rookie Munford on Curry. You heard Dave Hager tell about it. It's a good learning experience for his rookie. Thompson catch and shoot again. Clay Thompson from downtown. 14 three-pointers and we're not even at halftime yet 21 point lead with a minute and a half to go Randolph nice screen by Vince Carter to force the switch so Randolph got the good look against the smaller Iguodala and Iguodala foul Two things stand out on this set. The pass by Curry, the recognition by Bogut sets the screen, and Clay Thompson, get to your spot. That's a pass over the top of the defense in the pocket for Clay Thompson. Thompson, in, in many ways, he's an all NBA performer, he's a multiple all star, but in some ways, he's an unsung star. I mean, this guy, the way he carries himself, just does his job. Curry and Green get a lot of publicity. And he is just lights out. But Mark, as you always talk about, he is more than just a shooter. You think about it. He was basically the defensive stopper for them winning the gold medal. They put him on whoever it was that was a threat. And he didn't come into this league as a defensive stopper. The guy is an incredible basketball player. And not just Steph Curry's sidekick. Nice follow there. From Darrell Martin, and we hit the final minute of the first half. Bullet pass, Curry finishes. What a look 
from Andre Iguodala. 71st half points for Golden State. And 25 for Steph Curry, including seven threes. Randolph, ball deflected. Munford picks it up, three to shoot. Has to jack it up, can't get it to go. Rebound, Iguodala. Randolph. It's a poor, poor shot. Toyota halftime coming up. Curry for three. Iguodala back out green. Cross court Curry. Curry tries another three. Buzzer sounds. Ending the first half. Steph Curry 25 points, seven threes. The Warriors 14 three pointers. This epic season for Golden State with so many records broken. Still one more record to break, and they're halfway there. And Curry now with the seven three pointers. Now is one shy of going to 400. Again, he became the first player this season to make 300. Not only the first to make three, most likely be the first four. I mean, talk about shattering a record. Way to go out on a limb, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> well, this team all season, they've set NBA records, both team and individual. They've set so many franchise records, both team and individual. Randolph back to Carter. Vince Carter steps back and hits. Vince Carter, who's 39 years old in his 18th year, not ready to retire yet, still enjoys playing, loves being a role player and a leader for the young guys. Again, if you thought, if this team was healthy, Memphis, they're a beast to play. They are a tough team. And they play differently than a lot of teams now in the league. Old-fashioned way as Curry does it. 400 three-pointers in a season. Just another milestone in this breathtaking season for Stephen Curry. Finds Barnes, Barnes for three. Bogut tips it back out and they'll reset. Curry drives off the glass and in. 30 points in 19 minutes. And the lead back up to 22. Barnes, nice catch and finish. Barnes' first field goal. Curry using the green screen. Up to Bogut with a bad pass. Bogut thought he got held. Here comes Farmar. Offensive foul. Continuing to make history. 400 threes in a single season. Steph Curry. What a heck of a ride. What was that question you asked earlier about unanimous? Yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> but you know what I don't we have this fascination with round numbers. I, why didn't we stand up at 399? And that's pretty amazing too. I stood up at 399. Barnes misses. We do have this fascination with round numbers. Although 73 is not a round number. Curry hits again! Stephen Curry from way downtown! His ninth three-pointer of the game. Another dazzling display of long-distance shooting. Carter connects. And you know what I like watching? Even as they're rolling, every time they give up a bucket, Ron Adams is perturbed. <laughs> I, I, I love watching that. Curry floats it in, underhanded, and Dave Yeager calls timeout. Another Curry explosion. I mean, we have never seen this type of range.
and he's so much better from when he first came in the league in finishing around the basket. The finger roll here from Gervin Land. Wednesday presented by State Farm. Stephen Curry putting on a long distance show to show you how the three point has evolved in the NBA. Danny Ainge in 88 hit 100. John Starks back in 95 with the Knicks with 200. Curry 300 and 400 this year. As ball tipped out and taken by Farmar. By the way, the year the Bulls won 72, Scotty Pippen led the Bulls in three pointers as Farmar hits that with 150 three pointers. And that was considered a lot back then. And that wasn't even his game. Clay Thompson. Carter the rebound. As a team, they've hit 16. Carter drives. Bangs it in off the glass. Barnes tracks down the miss. Green tried to thread the needle. Barnes, scoop shot won't go. Green grabs it, but a loose ball foul is going to go against Draymond Green. And that will be his first. Well, bitter rivals will square off in this week's Sunday night baseball matchup on ESPN Giants and the Dodgers. Sunday Night Baseball presented by Taco Bell at 8 Eastern. I'm going to say something crazy right now. Here we go. <laughs> I've been thinking about it. If I was the Golden State Warriors and their ownership and organization, I would set a date right now and retire Steph Curry's jersey. Number. He's been that great. I'm not going to wait. We can have a celebration 10, 15, 20 years from now. But right now, what he's done to change this organization is absolutely incredible. I see what you're saying, but part of the fun is after a player retires to be able to come back and, and you salute him again. He can come back, and we can salute him again. It's worth it for him to salute him twice. But this is an organization that had a history of losing. There was a time when they, they, we couldn't beat the Memphis Grizzlies. They toyed with us, and the time has changed to the point where now they're toying with the Grizzlies. Yeah, but you remember now that as Curry lines up the corner three, last year when the Grizzlies were healthy, well, they went up 2-1. You know what I mean? Like, this, this team had to fight back down 2-1 twice. I'm retiring this jersey. I'm I like setting a date right now. You know what? It is crazy. <laughs> There's a butt in there, though. But I like it. Okay, thank you. It's scary, Mike, that he says he likes it. Now I want to go back on it. <laughs> now you have second thoughts. <laughs> you rub it off on me. Barnes gets the rebound. Back out Zach Randolph. Randolph does his Steph Curry impression. And everybody shooting threes. Back to 16. It was up to as many as 23. Curry chased off the three-point line and gets fouled. 35 points in 24 minutes. If you're Steve Kerr sitting over there, the mindset right now is, okay, let me get my guys out of this game. It's about starting the playoff healthy and whole. And these are the tough decisions, but... Steve Kerr has been there, and he understands how important that is. Well, he left it in many ways up to the players about going for the record, not resting down the stretch. He felt they deserved it. We asked him before the game what's impressed him or what's his mindset really coming into tonight, and he said how proud he was of the players. And the fact that they... As he said, put themselves out there night in and night out for greatness. They didn't shy away from this unbelievably difficult challenge. Randolph blocked and fouled. Oh, it's 6.03 remaining. Free throws from Randolph. And look what they did against the top teams. That is incredible. 14-1 against the other top teams in the NBA. 14-1. That is incredible. 
my goodness. Of their nine losses, four of them were against non-playoff teams, one of them against the Lakers. But when it came time to the NBA's best, 14 and 1. 15 point lead here, midway through the third. The NBA on ESPN, presented all season long by State. You expected uh, Kobe Bryant going out with a vengeance here on the final game of his spectacular career. 30 shots. <laughs> He's letting it rip. And some Kobe fans here as well. Mac Randolph hitting the free throw. Well, part of Golden State this year, and as with every great team, you have to have your health. Curry, Thompson, and Green. Combined missed only six games this year as Thompson misses badly Curry gets the rebound and banks it in And that obviously is so huge Mike you have to have your health But you also have to be willing and able to play well when you don't feel well And there is a reluctance Now to ever play in any discomfort so these guys it's not just about health It's about the willingness to play even when you're not feeling your best. Memphis has cut it to 14 after trailing by as many as 23. Give the Grizzlies credit. With everybody just willing and wanting to celebrate, the Grizzlies are still playing hard. Bad pass, though. And they have screwed up a number of fast break opportunities as Randolph called for a foul. Curry was just looked like resting there a minute. And the crowd quickly got up holding their collective breath. Now this is what you guys were talking about earlier. But now, I mean, it's only a 14-point game with five minutes to go in the third. And I don't think it was a foul. That's a lot of basketball. Certainly contact, but that's not a foul. Randolph is first. Alley up to Bogut. Draymond Green with his seventh assist. And Green. What, what a luxury when you have a forward who can run your offense. Steph Curry is dragging two to him coming off screens, but Draymond Green is initiating and igniting many of these great sequences. Farmar comes up short. Green, by the way, was saying during the All-Star break, Michael Jordan told him, hey, go get the record, and if you don't, I'll blame you as he mishandles that one. Green has been very vocal about how important getting 73 was to him. Back to 14 again. Warriors have seven turnovers here in the third after having seven the entire first half. Nice feed inside. Iguodala. Six assists for Curry as well. Just over three and a half remaining in the third. The largest lead is at 23. And a whistle and a foul away from the ball. Previously we saw Curry come off the screen and Draymond Green makes the play. This time he comes off, catches it and makes the same exact play. Draws two defenders to him and an unselfish superstar delivering the basketball to Iguodala. Bogut picks up his third foul. Farmer is going to come out. Munford comes in. Michael Green replaces Carter. Livingston has returned for Golden State. Curry's got 37 points in 26 minutes. Munford pick it back out. Barnes. And Barnes can't get at the bank. Jermichael Green just in the game. Nice put back. All right, talk about round numbers before. Curry's averaging 29.9 points per game. As he's fouled there. If he scores 41 tonight, he'll average 30 for the season. 
Okay, what is the average if it's like 43? Over 30. Okay. And remember, he's going to average 30 a game. He didn't play in the fourth quarter in 18 games this season. Not a second in the fourth quarter, 18 times. Hits the free throw. Upcoming national TV schedule, ESPN2 right now, Kobe Bryant's final game. Then the playoff coverage starts on ABC Saturday, on TNT Sunday, and NBA TV next week. The 2016 NBA playoffs on the horizon. And the first round in the West, to me, are we going to even have a competitive series? Well, that goes beyond five. I can't see it. How about the uh, L.A. Clippers and the Portland Trailblazers? It's going to be the best, but I still can't see it going beyond five. Ball knocked out of bounds off Randolph's leg. We've got teams like Dallas and Memphis that are banged up going in. Houston secured. Curry for three. Barnes the rebound. Randolph, tough catch in traffic, stolen and stripped by Curry. Curry drives, blocked but foul by Barnes. Let's check in with Doris Burke, DB. Well, Mike, I have the luxury of sitting next to the great Raymond Ritter of the Golden State Warriors, who's telling me that Steph Curry will become the first NBA guard to average 30 points and shoot 50% from the floor since Michael Jordan did it in 91-92. So that covers 24 seasons, to your point about averaging 30. And also, Doris, he's going to become the seventh player in NBA history to have a 50-40-90 season, shoot 50% from the field, 40% from three, and 90% from the line. Not only 40%, but he's at 45% from three. And he's got 40 points tonight. For the 13th time this season, he's hit the 40-point mark. So this is for all the marbles, Mike. <laughs> I know you like round numbers. No, it's interesting. Xavier Munford coming up on two minutes remaining here in the third. Randolph so crafty down low. 22 points for Randolph. Talk about your old-fashioned NBA player. Still so effective when healthy. Livingston to Green. They got Munford on him. Green goes across, lays it in. Curry saw the switch and immediately told Green to get down low. Nicodala with his fifth assist. The team has 28 assists. Munford shot can go. Azili. Seven boards for Azili. Curry drives. Scoop layup is good. 43 for Curry. And Lance Stevenson converts at the other end. Back out Livingston. Draymond Green. 17 three-pointers for the Golden State Warriors to lead back up to 21. You think they should call the game? I, I'd just say season's over right yeah, now. Yeah, no one get hurt. Everybody go home. It's been a heck of a ride. And Barnes is fouled. <laughs> Isn't there a great boxer in the house? Who are you introducing us to? The great Andre Ward. Right. This would be a TKO right now. This would be a knockout. This would. They would stop the fight. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. A 10 count. Yeah. Yeah, this, this is ugly. And it's over. It's okay. Memphis has acquitted itself well. They tried to come in here and play and play hard. Boy, do I say this hesitantly, but they just cut it to 14 a couple of minutes ago. All right, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I am so looking forward to playoff basketball. I will tell you that. 
Eastern Conference, Western Conference. This is an awesome time of the year. Curry pulls back, sets, three-pointer. I'll tell you, those three through six matchups in the Eastern Conference are going to be a joy to watch. And I think Indiana, if they're locked in defensively, can give Toronto a fight. Ninety-nine, eighty-one. Nolan State shooting 56% from the field. 29 assists. Curry catches, three-pointer, bang! I gotta have a talk with Xavier Mumford after the game, staying on Curry's body. Randolph doesn't get it off in time. That shot will not count. As Steph Curry with his 10th three-pointer of the night, he's got 46. Quarter and he came at you, you had this sort of incredulous smile on your face. When he's doing that, what's going through your mind? Just how happy I am that he's on my team. <laughs> I like that. 12 minutes from history, as you walk back to that huddle, these guys have been great all year. What do you tell them? Well, I thought in the third quarter we tried to turn it into a show, and that's kind of our weakness sometimes. First half we were great, simple plays led to great plays. And then third quarter, all of a sudden, we all turned into Magic Johnson and full court bounce passes. And uh, I think we had about eight turnovers, so we got to clean that up. You're glad he's on your team. We're glad we get to watch him. Mike. All right, Doris. They have been the best team all season. They've been the most entertaining team all season. And they're a quarter away from being owners of the best regular season in NBA history. And Mike, it's no secret, winning 73 games, the pressure's on to win it all. But this is a team that embraced that pressure. They don't run from it. They don't shy from it. And they deserve a lot of credit for their mentality and their all-time accomplishment. If you ask Curry of all the, there's so many things that you can talk about on the reason for this year's success and the impressive feats that they've accomplished, Curry thinks right at the top is the fact that they never lost two in a row. No team has ever done that throughout an NBA season, have failed to lose two games in a row. And that has not happened with these Golden State Warriors, just another record they're setting here this season. That's nice of him to say, but my, my answer would be that I'm back-to-back -back MVP. <laughs> no, there's no question. He's just being humble. The main reason is him. Wouldn't you have loved if he said that? Mike, what a dumb question. It's me. <laughs> well, some people answer that way, though. Well, yeah. Well, I don't even want to. I was thinking about Did you read that New York Times article on their organization? I did. I, I thought it could have used a touch more humility from their owner, Joe Lacob, saying that they were light years ahead of the NBA. A little strong and a little early. Well, and also, it's not taking into account that Steph Curry preceded him and their ownership group. That was Don Nelson and Larry Riley who made that selection. So I, I guess, listen, this league is hard. It's, a hard. it's hard to win. The truth be told is a lot of credit to go around. And I don't think it's any one thing. Steph Curry, obviously, and the players, they've done a great job as an organization, ownership, management. Bob Myers. Outstanding job with one of the, the great board. drafts with Draymond Green. Harrison Barnes Harrison and Preston Zeely. Yeah, that's... I mean, that's a, that's a great draft class. You know, their top four players of their own picks as Stevenson knocks it down. And if you talk about Curry and Thompson and Green and Barnes, all Golden State draft picks. Iguodala sets. Can't connect. Long rebound. Tracked down by Jermichael Green. Remember, this year follows, too, a season where they won 67 games. And Barnes misfires, so it would be, once they cement this one, 140 over two now. The Bulls that won 72, they won 69 the next year. As Barnes rattles in a three. 19th three-pointer of the game for Golden State. That's four shy of, the, of tying the NBA record.
Stevenson on the pull-up. For me, a lot of the, the most impressive part was here's a team that had this magical run last year, and they win the championship, yet they came back this season as hungry as they were last year. They start the season 24-0. 36 straight home wins to start the season, 14 straight road wins, and this is from a team that came off a championship. 8.49 remaining to history here at Oracle Arena. Well, right now on the verge of passing that great Chicago Bull team. Well, Mike, getting back to what you just finished talking about, the credit coming off of winning a championship. I've been part of teams as Harrison Barnes hits a tough turnaround jump shot. And coach, you can attest to this. You get some success individually and collectively. You got guys come back out of shape. You got guys come back with their own agenda, wanting to make money and thinking that they're better than they are. This is a team that continued to work their tail off, took pride, held each other accountable, and came back better and prepared to do it again. Right. Pat Riley used to call it the disease of me, I think. The disease of more and the disease of greed. Yeah. And it's like, it's really true, you know, it's, and, and for them to be able to avoid that pitfall is, again, a character issue that is impressive. Yeah, the, the unselfishness that this team exhibited last year for their first championship has not diminished at all. It's contagious. When your best player, and Steve Kerr talked about Steph Curry being Tim Duncan-like in his approach and his mentality and the way he embraces being coached, and it's absolutely true. But it's contagious throughout the lineup when your best player is able to be coached and held accountable. Well, Steph Curry telling us before the game, there's just no hidden agendas on this team. It, it really has been all about winning. And last year, again, was such a magical run. And this year, an historical one. What's the most games you've won as a coach in a single season? I think it's 57. And you, uh, you guys thought you were balling too, right? 57 wins is special. Absolutely. 73, unheard of. You know, and a big thing the players have talked about, and as Clay Thompson's going to come back in the game, is that they felt the pursuit of this goal of winning 73 in no way jeopardizes their number one goal of winning a championship. And you guys have both felt the same way about that. You don't think it will have any impact. The fact that they maybe have played more minutes down the stretch, had to extend themselves a little more. I think it's a positive. Spates with the rebound. And a foul. Positive in what way? Keeps you sharp. Goals in mind. Keep your habits up. And that's not just the guys in uniforms. That's coaching also. Yeah. I, I think we're in such this rest culture that anytime anybody plays now, we're shocked. We shouldn't be shocked. We shouldn't even really think that much of it. We should expect it. They're trying for something historically special. Harrison hits the three. Yeah, I'm, I'm so against the resting. I, mean, I think, as you have said in the past, we've got to be fair to the fans. It's almost like you should not buy tickets to the last two weeks of the season. No one plays. Even on teams that are out of it. Yeah, no, I don't even get that. Sacramento <laughs> went to Houston tonight with a chance to, you know, as a nice pass by Lance to Martin, but they had a chance to, you know, put themselves in a spoiler role, and instead they acquiesced and no one wanted to play. Well, here's, to give you a number, in 95-96 with, with Michael Jordan, he played all 82 games. He was the only starter to play all 82. He played 40 minutes or more 37 times that season. Steph Curry, who has played most of the games this year, Again, because he's missed so many of the fourth quarters. He's played 40 minutes or more only four times this season. I know he played 40 minutes a lot against us. <laughs> Ball knocked out of bounds. 
But I, I just think, like, you know, the thing you're talking about with, with these non-playoff people, like, sitting out. There you see the games missed. Again, the top three green. Thompson and Curry only six games. Jordan and Pippen only missed five games. Jordan didn't miss a single one. Current MVP and the former MVP going out in style in the regular season. As <laughs> Kobe's hoisting him up. Barbosa on the inbound. And these fans continue to celebrate. It has been an electric atmosphere all night long. These great Warrior fans, known as Dub Nation, they have been spoiled rotten with their team's play here at Oracle Arena. It's going to be two straight years where they're 39 and 2 at home. And they're doing the wave. That officially means you're bored. <laughs> Is this 2016? I think it's like. Party like it's 1989. <laughs> well, it's been great theater all season with these Warriors. They've had brilliant teamwork all year. They're shooting and passing unparalleled in today's NBA. But they've also showed a lot of toughness. There have been some games had to be both physically and mentally tough. It was a magical season last year. It's an historic season this year. I am impressed at these fans doing the way. I mean, this is give these fans credit. These are these are incredible fans. And think about how much losing they endured to get to this stretch over the last three years, plus 50 wins, a, a championship. Well, as always, as Stevenson misses, it was always a raucous arena, even when they weren't very good and the building wasn't filled. Obviously, they weren't selling out, but the fans who were here, so passionate. Thompson misses, Munt for the rebound. Martin throws it away. Five minutes left. Harrison Barnes misses the dunk. But space right there to clean it up. It has been a party all night long, right from that 37 point first quarter. A reminder of this magic moment, the next 30 for 30 film to make its debut on ESPN. The rise and fall of the Orlando Magic with Shaq and Penny in the mid 90s. This magic moment presented by Mini tomorrow at 9 Eastern on ESPN. Livingston falls down. Space. Timeout Memphis. Another chance for a standing ovation. Much just by the three pointers that has become such a huge part of today's NBA. Steve Kerr, unbelievably part of both teams. A terrific bench player. Now he gets to coach the MVP. Feed inside. And this one, another dominant game. They've had their, their dominant victories. They've had their thrillers that have gone down to the wire. They've obviously had some disappointing outcomes, but it has been compelling and riveting every step of the way to watch this team. And the best part of the season still to come, the playoffs, as Barbosa throws it away. Knocked out of bounds to a Memphis ball. Did I just see someone try to make an overhead bounce pass in the middle of the break? A point guard at that. Are I, my eyes deceiving me? Harrison. Nice move from Harrison. Well, their opening round of the playoffs is going to be against the Houston Rockets. Rockets, a team that have been one of the disappointing teams this season. 
Well, they got a win tonight. They're a talented team that obviously has playoff experience. These two teams met in the conference finals last year, and of course they have James Harden. Spates knocks it down. And Dwight Howard has had a little uptick. I think Dwight Howard is now, a, a technical foul is called. Why are they calling a technical foul? Looked like a double technical. Gary Zielinski making the call. Andrew Barbosa being talked to by Billy Spooner. James Michael McAdoo is going to come in. Barnes will sit 15.6 rebounds for Barnes. He gets a nice ovation. Munford and Barbosa with the double technical. But Mike, I was saying about Dwight Howard. Underestimate him at your own risk. He's still, an, he's a, still a very good player, capable of being very, very good. Had some very big playoff games last year. You know, as we count down here in the final minutes, you think of all the great teams in the history of the NBA and all the great legends that played on those teams. Yet none of those teams accomplished what Golden State is going to do here tonight. Whether you're talking about the great Celtic teams or the Lakers or the Bulls, players like Russell and Chamberlain and West and Jordan. Spates. Crowd ooing and eyeing with every three-point attempt. 19 of 44 from downtown. We just received word Kobe Bryant has 51 points tonight. And an offensive foul call as we go under the two-minute mark. Curry, meanwhile, with just 46 tonight, 10 three-pointers, six assists, four rebounds, a couple of steals. Somebody should go up to Steph Curry right now and say, Kobe Bryant outscored you tonight. <laughs> And that's against a very good defensive team in Utah. Just to get up that many shots as a talent. Ran and rush. Who had some big moments early in the season. Harrison Barnes missed 16 games with an ankle injury. Rush filled in. And he played well. So many different players playing roles for these Golden State Warriors. Even their head coach, as I mentioned earlier, missing the first 43 games. They have been, in the basketball world, the greatest show on earth all season long. Even Greg Popovich said, I'd buy a ticket to go watch them play. Ball knocked loose. McAdoo has to put it up. Verizal can't get the tip. Now we're under a minute remaining. One of the most storied records in basketball is about to fall. What a momentous night for this franchise. And what a wonderful night for the NBA. This crowd has been on its feet almost the entire night. Ball tip won't go. And they'll dribble it out. Final seconds here at Oracle Arena. It's official number 73. The greatest regular season in NBA history now belongs to the 2016 Golden State Warriors.